Now I'm just going to close this table we've been working on, TBL Employee, so hit the close button here. Do you want to save the layout changes to the table? And I'll go yes. So it's not saying do you want to save the data entry, it's just the layout changes. And that's more than likely the column width, so I'll go yes. I'll also hit the shutter button to open up my navigation pane, and I quickly want to create another table. So I'm going to go to Create, and I'm going to go Table Design. The fields I'd like are Call ID, and also I'd like Subject, Call Date. Now I'm just going to take a copy of Call, Control C, so I can go down, Control V, and put Time, Control V, and put Type just to paste it and save me typing it, and then employee ID and customer ID. I'll then quickly change this to an auto number and this to a date and this to a date. Um, I'll leave out the descriptions. You don't have to do the descriptions, but you can enter the descriptions into the third column. I'll also make this a primary key field, so the key appears to the left of call ID. And I'll save this as, I use the function key F12, which is save as, and I'll save it as TBL call. And this is my call table. This then appears in my navigation pane, and now I want to view the data sheet. So I'm just going to go to view. Straight away I can see I've got this call table, and I'm ready now to start to enter data. The only problem I have is I really would like to create some drop downs so that people can easily enter data and make less chance of spelling mistakes and know what options are valid. So we're going to make some combo boxes using the lookup wizard. We'll go back to design view of the table and the first combo box I want to make is for subject. Subject is currently short text and that's good, but I want to hit this drop down and I want to choose the lookup wizard. When I choose the lookup wizard, this wizard starts, and I have two options to begin with. The combo box or drop down box can be based on either a table or query, or I can type the values that I want. Let's try that one first. I will type the values that I want in next. I'm going to be given one column, though I can have two or three, but I'm only needing one. So in column one, I want to see contract. So the type of call was either the subject was either regarding a contract, it was regarding a meeting, or it was regarding support. And then I'll go next. And I try to make these alphabetical and start with a unique letter each entry, so it's easy data entry for the users. And next, I'll then leave the label as subject, which describes what it is. And I'll actually limit them to the list, that they can only choose entries in the list and not type anything else. And I'll click Finish. I now want to see what it looks like, so I'll go to the View button, and yes, I'll save my table. I'll go across to Subject, and now I have a drop-down, where before I didn't. When I click the drop-down, I can choose my three options, and I have this option here as well, which allows them to edit the list of entries and add more entries if they want to. Well, I can see a danger to that, so I want to turn that off. So I'm going to go back to the design view, and I'm sitting on subject, and I go down to here to field properties. I don't want to look at the general properties, I want to look at the lookup properties. Now the lookup properties tell me that this is a combo box, and I can change it back to a text box if I wanted to, but I'll leave it as a combo box. Its row source type is a value list, so that's where we said we would type the values that we wanted, and here they are here, all three of them. If I decided actually I need a fourth option, which is other, I'll just go semicolon, double quote, other, double quote. Just continue to follow the pattern of what's there. It is only one column bound and one column count, and there are no column headings. And the width of the column is 2.54, and the number of rows that will be displayed by default before they have to start scrolling is 16. And you can see information out the right hand side here explaining what each of these properties does. I've also limited them to the list yes, which means it will only accept text only if it matches one of the listed choices. And here they can choose more than one item if they wanted to. So they could choose contract and support if they wanted to. But I don't want them to select multiple items, so I'll leave that on no. 
And it's here that they're able to edit the list of items. I really want to change that to no, so I'm going to double click this property and set it to no. So then they won't be able to add their own items, they can only choose from the four options now listed. If I go view, and yes I want to save, I will go to subject, hit the drop down, there's my four options, I no longer have that button, I can no longer edit it, and I can only choose one option. I'd now like to change call type also to a combo box, which is at the moment is just a text box. So I'll go back to design and I'll go to call type and I'll click where it says short text and choose the lookup wizard. For call type, I would like to choose the values that I want and next. I'll click under the heading call one and I'll type email. It was either an email down arrow or it was a fax down arrow or it was a phone call down arrow or it was a visit. And I'll go next. I don't want them to choose any other options than those listed, so I'll choose this. I don't want them to select multiple items, so I won't choose that, and I'll go finish. I'll now go to the lookup properties. I've decided that I actually need a few more options, so I'm going to hit, I'm going to press semicolon, double quote, and put other, and double quote. So it's either an email, a fax, a phone call, a visit, and that's pretty much it. Um, I'll also allow value list edits, no. So you can change the lookup properties here as well, and they are limited to the list, yes. So if I go to view and save yes, and then I go to call type, I can see I have a drop down with those five options listed. So those two combo boxes were examples of I will type the values that I want. Now I want to create two more combo boxes, one for employee ID and one for customer ID, that actually looks up the employees in the employee table so that they can choose a valid employee. So I'm actually going to go back to design view. I'm going to click on employee and I'm going to change it to a lookup wizard. And I'll go with the first option and next. I want it to look at the employee table and next. And I wanted them to see certain fields. So for example, I want them to see employee ID, last name, first name. And that's important that I put them in the right order as well, that I send them across in the right order. If I was, for example, to hit this button, I'll send them all across. If I hit this button, I'll send them all back. If I choose certain fields, I use the single greater than sign. And I can send certain fields back using the single less than sign and then send them back over again. So that's what those buttons are for, and next. I want to sort by last name, and maybe then by first name, and next to that. Oh, if I go back, you can choose descending order or ascending order, so next to that. It hides the key column, so you can't actually see the ID fields but they will be what is eventually stored in that field will be the ID. But they don't need to see that because it doesn't mean anything to them. They'll make their judgment based on last name and first name. I'll then go next. I'll accept employee ID and finish. It says that it wants to create a relationship, so I'll go yes. And so I've created a combo box that looks up values from another table. If I go to view this table, and I go across to employee ID and hit the drop down, there you can see are the list of employees in the employee table. Now it would be nice to see column headings that explain that this is the last name and this is the first name. So I'm going to go back to the design view, click on employee ID, go to the lookup properties. This is a combo box not based on a values list as we've seen earlier, or field list, it's based on a table or a query. This is what drives the source of what it's based on. And you can view that by hitting these three dots here, the build button. And you can actually see that what you see in the combo box is the employee, the last name and the first name. And it's sorted by last name and sorted by first name, though those two aren't showing. And I'll close that by hitting the close button. You can see that the column that's bound is the first column, which is the employee ID, but there are three columns. Here's the column headings. Yes, I want to see the column headings. The first column is hidden because the width is zero, but the other two columns are an inch wide. 
it'll show me 16 employees before I start having to scroll and this is the width of the entire box. It is limited to the list, they aren't allowed to choose multiple values and allow them to edit the list, no. So that's where you can control the particular drop down or look up options or properties and when I go to view and yes I want to save and I look at my employee ID drop down there's my column headings and it's sorted and showing me the employees that I have in my employee table. Now what I omitted to do which is very naughty of me is I omitted to open up the file called tracking 2 and so I proceeded to create my call table in my first call tracking file. So I'm going to take this as an opportunity to show you how to open up the call tracking 2 and then how to bring the call table into the call tracking 2 file. You may not have to do this if you actually took notice of the notes. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to open and I'm going to open and browse and I'm going to browse my desktop Oh, there it is there, and I'm going to open my Call Tracking 2 file. Open that. The reason I want to open the Call Tracking 2 file is I've actually got a customers table with 9 customers in it. I've actually got an employee table with 9 employees in it, and that just saves you doing a lot of data entry. But now I need to bring my TBL call table into this database. So if I go to External Data, and I go to Import and Link, I can import data from a new source and it's from a database and it's from an access database. I'll then tell it with the use of the browse button where my database is and it just so happens to be on the desktop and it's the database called Core Tracking and I'll open it. I want to import a table so I accept this option and go OK. The table I want to bring in is the TBL call table and OK and close and I've just brought the TBL call table into the call tracking 2 database so now I can continue to work. When I open up the TBL call table and I go to the employee ID drop down I can actually see the employees from the employee table in this database. Now what I'd like to do is proceed to create my fourth and final combo box. So I'll go into the design of the TBL call table. I'll go to customer ID. I'll click the drop down on short text and ask for the lookup wizard. I'll tell it I want the lookup field to get its values from another table, next. And it's the customers table, next. The fields I'd like to see are customer ID, last name and first name and next. I'd like to sort by ascending order by last name and sort in ascending order by first name and next. I'd like to keep the key column hidden, which is the customer ID, and be able to see the first and last name, next. I want to keep the name customer ID and finish. It wants to then create a relationship between the call table and the customer table, so I'll go yes to create that relationship. When I view my table now, I can see that not only can I choose an employee ID, as I made earlier, I can now choose a customer ID. But I'd like to see the column headings appear, so I'm going to go back to the design of my table. I've clicked on customer ID and I'm going to the lookup properties. It's in here that I say column heads yes, and that should all be that, that's all that should be necessary. Um, if I then go and view my table, and yes save my table. When I go across the customer ID and hit the drop down there's my column headings. So I can see my customers, I can see my employees, I can see the types of calls that can transpire and I can see what subjects they'll fall into. So those are your combo boxes. Now I would like to do some data entry um, starting with the date um, actually starting with the subject. The subject is meeting so I press M so this is why I try to make each entry in that combo box begin with a unique letter if I can do because then they've just got to press one letter and it's filled and then I'll press tab. The call date, the quickest way to enter the 1st of September for this year is 1 slash 9 and that will default to this year. The call time, the quickest way to enter 9am is to put 9a and that will enter 9am. 
the call type was an email so I press E and that will bring up email. The employee was Davilo so I hit D and the customer ID was brown so I hit B. Now the first B is black so then I go R. B R will give me brown and then I can go enter and tab or enter and enter. The next one is a contract. It occurred on the 11th of the 11th of this year. It also transpired at 10 a 10 a.m. It was a phone call, so P. It was between leveling, L, and done, D, enter, enter. And you can see how easy it is to do data entry when we've taken the time to create combo boxes, and especially if the entries are fairly unique. And so that's my data entry done. I've got five calls that have transpired entered into my call table. And I'll just close that table.